is hot in the tropics. <laughs> Add the coolness of the English and things can start to sizzle. Here where we are, the rainy season sweeps over the land for maybe six months of the year. Our city? Ah, a bungalow here amidst the rainforest. Up on the stilts, the roof pitched, the verandas broad. We look out into the woods, into the forest. The rubber plants close enough, the coolie huts far enough away. And who are these fine people who should live in such a fine establishment? Ah, Constance. Golden hair in marceled waves. Fingernails bright red. Knees rouged. Her lips painted in a clearer bow. <laughs> Clearly our heroine. But who is there to appreciate all this feminine pulchritude? Certainly not her husband. Gerard F O T H E R I N G A Y Fungi. <laughs> <laughs> you know the English. And he's the new uh, estate manager of this plantation. A little pencil mustache on the upper lift, still black. But his hair, let's call it silver, twice the age of Constance. Clearly not our hero. Don't give up. Because look, there are some more possibilities coming up the road, even as we speak. Ah, there they are. But they're walking. Ah, behind, three paces behind, is Tennessee, demure. Dainty, dark and dusky, lovely and lithe. But I should just warn you at this point that she has no lines of dialogue, so don't get <laughs> <laughs> oh, that But her husband, Ananda. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Ananda, he looks good. He's, uh, he's not tall, but he's quite tall enough. And uh, he's... He's like a really good cup of coffee, you know. He's, uh, he's dark, he's strong, he's steamy. <laughs> Got this lovely, rich, deep voice and he smells kind of aromatic. And <laughs> Sorry, I distracted myself there for a moment. But you can see that he is clearly a hero. <laughs> uh, but Jared, you remember Jared? He doesn't see it at all. There he is, huffing and puffing off his strings. Uh, oh yes, you, you own that little plantation on the edge of my land. Uh, I could give you a good price for it, you know. <laughs> my father sold much of our land to the British, but I will hold on to what we have for my people, for my sons. Yes, but with the Everyone getting these motor cars now, more rubber wheels, you know, there's a lot of business coming and uh, I don't think you've got what it takes to understand business. All that is needed is to understand the land and the people. Well, you can't even understand a necktie, so <laughs> just simple people. <laughs> <laughs> Tansy looks on. She sees them off. Now, Ananda has always been the most important person hereabouts, but uh, <coughs> things can change. Jared does not encourage them to linger, but, but Constance, she invites them to come again, to visit some more before the rains come and make the roads impassable. The rains are coming, and, and the land gets long and humid. And Tennessee is such a dainty little thing. It's, it's such a long walk for her. That must be why Ananda visits so often alone. And, and when Jared is in the house, he sometimes doesn't even go on to the veranda, just lurking there amidst the trees. It gets hot 
as the rainy season comes on. Constance's hot. <laughs> <laughs> and Jared, uh, Jared seems unable to relieve her. She goes into her bedroom to relieve herself of all these clinging draperies. The sweat on her body makes them cling to her flesh. She will draw off her dress. And then her shoes. And then roll down the stockings down her long, long legs, languidly. Outside amidst the trees, Amanda stands and watches. Oh, but there comes Tennessee coming up the road. Ah, lingering beside him, coming up to him. She's just been in time to, to see Jared. Jared has been arguing with their own people, you know, um, people they know. People who are angry at, at his threats to the land, the land that Ananda will take care of it. She has seen him, Gerard, with his gun, brandishing it at their people. But, uh, but now she is close to Ananda. A drop of rain falls <laughs> and drips down his manly chest. <laughs> Another drop. More rain is coming. Ananda and Tennessee should leave now, leave this English place, go back to their own home. But as they go, Ananda stops. He looks at little Tennessee. You should go home. And Tennessee looks back at the house he wants to leave and sees Constance leaning out against the veranda, her arms gleaming palely in the green blue. And Ananda says again, you go home now. So Tansy does go. She moves on with her usual grace until she reaches the turn of the road and can look back and, and see all that is happening. The raindrops begin to fall. The thunder rolls. <laughs> the heavens crack open. <laughs> and the rains come down. <coughs> and Ananda. Ananda follows into the rainforest following the undulating constants. Tennessee watches until the rains conceal them both. But she has already seen all that she needs to see. The rains keep coming down. But it does not stop Ananda from coming to the bungalow, oh no. Every day you can see him coming down that path. The rains making his baju belayal gleam wetly in the rain, clinging to his body, his long legs striding strong and brown through the mud. Until Constance helps him, and then when he and Tanasi come for dinner or cocktails with the fungies, he is now dressed in a white suit with a tie neatly knotted, shiny black shoes and a big black umbrella. He can light cigarettes for Constance, for Gerard, for himself. His smile is broad, dazzling even, as he announces his decision to sell the land to Gerard. <laughs> Look at Gerard there. <laughs> Huffing and puffing, thinking that he has won, that he has got all the land. He doesn't realise, as Constance and he do, that with his woman, a 
claiming the land next to his. It is all his, just for a word in her little pink ear. You see him now, leaning down to sign the contract. And there is Constance beside him, uh, brushing off some bark that has unaccountably clung to the back of his suit. Her cocktail glass in one hand, the ice tinkling as she smokes at her husband. The two families are closer than ever before. <laughs> but as the rains keep falling, the rivers begin to rise and rise. Soon, the road into the city is impassable. We can see people moving back and forth, the natives going up to the highlands, fleeing, getting closer, the coolies waiting for rescue to be clambering up onto the roof so that they can be taken to the nearest towns. And Ananda and Tamsi, where should they go? Why, to the bungalow, of course, for shelter and, uh, well, for shelter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so they can come and be welcomed by their friends, the Fangis as the air gets damp and muggy. And there they are, alone in the house as the waters rise, isolated from the outside world. The only sounds, footsteps pacing on the wooden floors, the scratch and hiss of the Victrola, the wind blowing and making the blinds of the bamboo roar. <sighs> and of course, always and forever, the never-ceasing sound of rain. And across the roof, the fan. They wait. Wait for rescue. Can you hear it? The sound of rain was so loud, it took a while before you could hear the sound of a boat coming close. The boat is coming to rescue them. Constance, Gerard, they, they scrabble, grabbing up all of their belongings that they can to go across to get them. But at this, Ananda rises forth strong and masterful, and he grabs his lover by the wrist. Stop! You go to your doom. Wait here, my woman, till my people shall rescue us and take us up to safe high land they know of. And Constance, looking back at this man, gives a tinkling little laugh. <laughs> she looks at her lover. Not bloody likely! <laughs> oh, no, I to say with a lot, bunch of natives! No, no, we may have our fun, ducky, but jerry has got his land, what he wanted. But uh, now I'm getting on that boat, I'm getting out of here! Ananda loses her hand. Constance uh, continues on, clackety, clackety across the boards to the veranda where the boat is bobbing off and she reaches out to Gerard to haul her ashore, but his hands are still by his side and the boat moves back further and further, his voice receding as he calls out, I could forgive you intemperance, ignorance, infidelity, but never your unremitting vulgarity. <laughs> and he goes, oh, away, the boat is gone, her husband is gone, she is alone here in the house with her ex-lover and his wife. <laughs> somewhat embarrassing social situation, but, but Constance can rise to the occasion even as the waters continue to rise. And so she moves closer to Ananda, a certain suggestion in her walk, her smile blazing forth. She reaches out close enough to touch him, close enough for him to touch her with those long, strong fingers that have so, so often caressed her face, her throat, until 
fucking squeeze us. Until neither chatter, nor wine, nor tinkling little laugh will ever be heard again. Tennessee has seen everything. Tennessee has always seen everything. But she says no word. She joins her husband once more, and together they climb up onto the roof to wait for rescue to come. The sound of rain again. <coughs> so loud, it took a while before they could hear the boat coming through, the, the slap of raindrop on flood, on roof, but then it comes again. Tuck, 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 tuck. But it is not the boat of the natives. Oh no, it, it's Gerard, piloted up here, coming closer towards them. Gerard reaches out and he, he lifts Tennessee up into the boat. Ananda, impatient with this English courtesy, grabs hold of the side of the boat and Tennessee, his wife, reaches out her hand, covering his as she prizes Lucy's fingers one <laughs> at a time, and he falls down the side of the boat, splangling, splashing, thrashing, drowning, dying. Bloop, bloop. <laughs> bloop. The pilot looks on in horror, amazed, and, and not well meaning, certainly, but clearly not grasping the implications of the situation, he leans forward to <coughs> rescue the drowning man. But Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee is alert. She pulls the gun from Jared's holster. <laughs> and there goes the last witness. <laughs> Jared draws her into his arms and kisses her deeply with the ease of long practice. My dear, I can always <coughs> count on you. And so they row off together while the rains conceal. Oh, no.